Welcome to Thrive Church. We are so glad to have you here with us this week. Um, does anybody know what significant happened this week? Something, some big significant event that happened this week on October 21st? No, not on October 21st. It was the day that, you know, in Back to the Future, Marty McFly went into the future and he supposedly came out. We don't have hoverboards or any of that stuff. But you will get to go back in the future next weekend because next weekend's daylight savings time. So uh, we're going to give you an extra hour to sleep. You get to go back in time an hour. But, um, but you might want to make sure that you do that so, uh, so you can show up at church on time. Otherwise, uh, I guess you'll... Will you be really early next week? Yeah, I think. Well, that's fine. If you're early, that's fine. We can use the help setting up and tearing down. So, uh, so that that's all good then. But um, we want to welcome you here. We are so glad uh, to have you with us as we're talking about uh, the book of James. And uh, and if you want to follow along, you have a, a note page that you can take notes if you like to. Um, but uh, have you ever? Has anyone ever here ever? Stuck your foot in your mouth? I, I don't mean like 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 yoga kind, you know. I mean like 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 I mean you you said something and you're like, man, I just stuck my foot in my mouth. Okay, anybody? Let's let's raise them proud. Okay, most of you guys. The rest of you, you're just too embarrassed to raise your hand because you're sitting next to the person, you know, and uh, and that's okay. But you know, we we always are saying things. We're sticking our foot in our mouth. Do you know the average person speaks? around 15,000 words a day. 15,000 words a day. That's like a short book. That's like a 60-page book every single day. Every month, that's like, it's like writing 10 normal-sized novels of 200 pages each. That's like, that's like every year writing 26 Moby Dicks. With 900 pages, 20, that's how many words we're spewing out of our mouth all the time. And you know what? Some of those words aren't the prettiest things in the world, you know? Maybe it's just me, I don't know. But James here, he talks about the words that we say and the power of words and the thing that controls our words, that speaks our words, our, eh, our tongue, right? So, we're going to read this. We're going to start... In James chapter 3, starting in verse 1, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Verse 2, Indeed, we all make many mistakes, for if we could control our tongues, we would be what? Perfect. Perfect. Man, any of us can control our tongue. He says, We'll be perfect. That takes a lot of control, though, to control our tongues. He says, if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect, and we could also control ourselves in every other way. It's kind of a litmus test. If you can control your tongue, you can control anything about yourself. Goes on to verse 3. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even if the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. But a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the body, the tongue... Everybody, stick it out. Rude. Um... The tongue is a flame of fire. A flame of fire. It, it is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. Amen. You're like, yeah, my husband's tongue is just like that, or my parents' tongue is just like that. But it's talking about you. Not about the other, but it's talking about you. Man, have you ever noticed that our tongue can put us in a whole world of problems? Yeah, you ever realize that, man? I mean, we're just saying something, and we're like, man, it, it feels so good to say that, doesn't it? Like, man, I just, 
I got this line. I just got this comeback. It was a great, and it feels so good to get it out there. And then the damage takes place, you know, and you lost your job as a result of it or, or whatever. And it's like, man, but it felt so good. Or, or after the fact, you ever do this? Or maybe I'm the only crazy one. You get in a fight or an argument, and then like, like an hour later, it comes to you, right? The perfect comeback. You're like, man, if only I could have thought about that. Yo mama joke, you know? That would have just fixed everything, you know? Okay, where was I? <laughs> Verse 6. <laughs> and among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds and reptiles and fish. You see this? Right, you go to the zoo and they have animals do things, and, and that's impressive. We saw bears this past summer, and they swang on swings and ate ice cream. Great. They can tame all kinds of things, even fish. Right, we see them do things with fish, and, and that's impressive. But verse 8 says, no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Think about a snake. Where does the poison come from? comes from its mouth, right? And we have a lot of poison that comes from our mouth. That, that actually, uh, that word there, that Greek word, it talks about poison like from a snake, but it also talks about rust, something that corrodes and destroys. One, the thing that's interesting about rust is this. It destroys, but it does it slowly over time. And sometimes our words, they do that. They corrode people, and they live with those words for years and years, and it's slowly rusting, corroding, and destroying us. No one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes, like this morning, we come to church, we sing, we praise God. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father. And we're all like, oh, how you doing? God bless you. I love you. It's so nice to be here. And then we leave and somebody cuts us off in traffic. And we start bringing out the other words. the not church words, you know. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father. And sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. We start cursing other people. Man, how can that person, how do they even deserve to live they didn't go when the light turned green, you know? This person is just worthless. I mean, and we start spewing out these words, these curses towards people that God have made. Verse 10, and so blessing and cursing comes pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring bubble water out with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No! can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. This is the longest teaching in the Bible about the tongue. There's other little quotes here and there, but this is the longest 12 verses dedicated to that. Did your tongue ever get you in trouble? Man, my tongue has gotten me in trouble before, and I'm guessing it's probably gotten you in trouble before. And here's the thing, unless if we have an encounter with God, our tongues can never be tamed. We can't tame them on our own. And we say things that we wish we could get back. Oh, you're just worthless. Oh, and those words just, they're gone. They're out there. I'm like, try, I wish I could get them back. I wish I could get it back. I'm like, how do I get it back? I can't, I can't grab them and shove them back in my mouth. They say, make sure your words are sweet because you might need to eat them someday, you know? You ever had to eat your words? Yeah, you ever do this? This is the worst. You're talking about somebody. I mean, somebody's like a jerk, right? And you're talking about them to your friend, and they're like kind of like doing this, like twitching in their face. And you're like, what, what's wrong with your face? And, and they're twitching, and you're talking about and the person's like standing like right behind you, you know? And they're trying to give you like nonverbal communications, and you just think they got a nervous twitch or something. That's the worst. That's the worst. We got to eat our words. Listen to what it says in Psalm 141, verse 3. Take control of what I say, O Lord, and guard my lips. Guard my lips. Take control of what I say. It's like this. This this is a prayer we should all be praying. Lord, help me keep my big mouth shut. 
I, we should probably pray that like, like in the morning when we wake up, Lord, help me to keep my big stinking mouth shut. And at lunchtime, Pray it again. Lord, help me keep my mouth shut. And at nighttime, and, and, and you know, when, when your parents ask you to do something, or, or you're mad at your kids, or your spouse, or your boss, or, or your teacher, like, Lord, help me to keep my big mouth shut because I really want to say something that I shouldn't say right now. We should be praying that throughout the day. You know, tongue is so interesting, isn't it? Tongues are so interesting. They allow us to taste. They allow us to speak. Chameleons, they have, they have amazing sticky tongues that can catch things. You know, a chameleon's tongue is one and a half times the length of his body. Man, that's a long tongue. I'm glad God didn't make us that way. That would be crazy. You know, a blue whale, a blue whale's tongue, get this, is the size of a full-grown elephant. That, I mean, you got to hear this dude give some insults, you know. I mean, he's insulting the dolphins and the, and the fish and the octopus and everything. This guy's got a big tongue. It's like, like over two tons. This thing's huge. Ours is only two to three ounces. It's a lightweight, you know. But, but man, what can it control? Think about what people have done with the power of their tongue. The Hitlers and the Osama bin Ladens and, and, and the dictators and, and the, the bad people in our world. What they have accomplished with the power of their tongue. The tongue is so small, it's a very tiny part of our body, but it's disproportionately powerful, isn't it? It has a lot of power. The rest of the body is so much bigger. But this has such an influence on our life. It has such an influence on your family on your friends, on your relationships, on your job, on your school. Man, that tongue can really get you in trouble. And this verse tells us what the tongue can do. But it also compares the tongue to a couple of things. Here's some of the things that the Bible compares our tongue to. James compares our tongue to. The first thing is the tongue is a bridle. The tongue is a bridle. Or, or a bit in a bridle. A horse is powerful, isn't it? I mean, it's so powerful, we named power after it, right? Horsepower. I mean, this is like, like you know, 3,000 pounds of, of, of crazy, you know? I mean, horses, they're so powerful, but you got like a 100-pound jockey up on top of it controlling this thing with a little bit in a bridle. These things are so powerful, they could run away. They could do anything that they want to. But it's directed by something so small, something relatively insignificant. Man, do you know there's power in your words? You know, you can change the tone of a room by the words that you say. You go into your room and, or into a room and you tell someone, I love you. Isn't that a, isn't that a, those three words, those are, uh, uh, those are life-changing words, right? I mean, you say that. You can't pull that back. I mean, I mean that, that, that's like, that's, that ch- defines a relationship, saying I love you to someone. Or telling someone, I believe in you. You did a great job with something. Telling somebody, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. Wow, you look good today. Guys, write that one down, you know? <laughs> say it to your wife from time to time. Say it to your kids from time. Man, you look good today. The power of the tongue, it changes the atmosphere. But so does the other side of words. I can't stand you. I wish you'd never been born. Don't even ever talk to me again. I don't even see you again. I hate you. I can't stand being around you. Man, we hear words like that, it changes the atmosphere, doesn't it? Man, it it just redefines things. And sometimes we can't even recover from those words. So the tongue is like a bridle, controlling a horse. Uh, James also said the tongue is like a rudder on a ship. Man, you see these giant ships. I don't know if you've ever been on a cruise before. My wife and I went on a cruise many years ago. And I mean, this entire ship is controlled by a relatively small rudder. Man, this thing directs that ship wherever the the captain wants it to go. You might say, hey, I want to go to Bermuda. But if that rudder is not pointing you in that direction, 
You're not going to go there. Because what, is, what does a tongue do? It sets the direction. What does a rudder do? It sets the direction for the, for the ship. Our tongue sets the direction for our life. And if we're always spewing out critical, sarcastic comments to people, and we wonder why we end up over here rather than over there, well, it's no wonder. It's no wonder. Your tongue is directing you. It's guiding you. The tongue is powerful. The next thing James talks about is the tongue is a spark. The tongue is like a spark. You ever seen a wildfire before? Has there anybody actually ever seen one like in real life? A couple people have seen them. Man, a wildfire has got to be like one of the most devastating things. Man, being in a wildfire, something, a forest fire burning out of control, it changes the landscape, doesn't it? I mean, here's forest vegetation that's taken years and years and decades to grow, and it's wiped out in just a short period of time. It changes the landscape, and it takes years and years and years for that to grow up, grow back again. Did you know here in this year, 2015, so far, 9 million acres of America have been burned by wildfires. 9 million acres. Just to give you give you a perspective of what 9 million acres is, uh, Connecticut is 3.5 million acres. Okay? So almost three times the size of Connecticut has burned due to wildfires. Some of you maybe have heard of the Great Chicago Fire. You guys know how the Great Chicago Fire was started? Supposedly from a cow that knocked over a lantern and caught, a, caught on fire. And, and as a result... 300 people died, 100,000 people were homeless, all because of a spark from a lantern that was by probably a little coal or a match or something. But did you know, most people don't know this, that that same night, the same exact night, there was another fire in Pestigo, Wisconsin, where 2,500 people died. In fact, they don't even know how many people died because the fire was so widespread that it destroyed all the records of the people as well. And, and for some reason, Chicago, the great Chicago fire got all the press because it was in a city, and this was more on the countryside. But 2,500 people died. They say it was the deadliest fire in American history. Man, all started by a little spark. Our words are like that, though. Did you know that? A little flicker. A little flicker. A little spark. Just a little comment that we say to somebody. A little, a little slur, maybe, maybe a, a racial comment that we say. A little dig or a jab that we throw at somebody. Giving someone our opinion when we know it's really more of a jab at them and their personality. We're not careful. We can ignite a fire and it produces massive, massive ruins and destroys all kinds of things. Man, you, you, you take a spark and you light a fire. And just a little while later, 200 miles away, and that fire is still burning. You, you make a comment now. Say a comment to somebody. 10, 20 years later, that comment's still burning. Man, some of you have heard comments in your life. People have said words to you in your life. And these things are still burning, still destroying, still poisoning, still corroding your life. Man, our tongues are powerful. We need to be careful what we're saying. With the power of the internet, you say, you say a comment, and man, that can just spread around the world immediately. Now, now there's a problem with this verse. It says, talks about the, thumb, uh, the, the, the tongue, but we have a new tongue, don't we? We have the thumb tongue, right? You know what I'm talking about, the thumb tongue? This is the one where we're tapping on our cell phones, and we're leaving comments, we're posting garbage on the internet, you know, the internets. Those things where all the information is. I think Google owns it all, maybe. I don't know. But, you know, our, our thumb tongue, are we in control of our thumb tongue? Man, we, we say things, we just let things slip out. Our text tongue, our comment tongue. You wouldn't believe how many times I've commented on people's posts, maybe even yours, I don't know, hopefully not. And I've deleted the comments. And I'm like, man, I just got to delete that. I can't say that. Like, what, what am I thinking? I, we we got to get control of our thumb tongue. We give, give a little jab. You see these people where, where they put a comment on Facebook, and you know it's directed at an individual, but they try to make it sound broad. 
Like, to all my haters out there, you know, and it's like, come on. You're not a superstar. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just directed at one person. It's like, to all these people who can't think I don't accomplish anything in life, you know, do whatever you tell them to do. I don't know. And we say these things out there, and man, we're not in control. And a spark begins, and it starts in an inferno, and it hurts people, and it's powerful. You know, the tongue has been a problem since the day we're born. You can write that down. The tongue has been a problem since the day that we're born. You know, I never had to teach my kids to be mean. Some people are like, oh, kid, you know, like, like the Tarzan movies. I don't like that. And I'll tell you why I don't like the concept of like Tarzan and all this. You know why? Because they're like, oh, here's this guy raised by, you know, whatever, monkeys, and, and he's so innocent because he's out there raised by monkeys. Number one, have you seen monkeys? They're sick. They're violent, man. Those things are crazy. I mean, so come on. Don't give me that. But also, they're like, oh, our kids only learn bad things because we teach them that. I never taught my kids to be mean. I never taught them to be disrespectful or to lie. I, I promise you, I never taught them that. But yet they figure it out all on their own. They just figure it out. It's a sinful nature. Where did they get that from? They didn't get that from me. They didn't get, I'm not saying I never did that before, but I didn't do it around them, okay? You know, but we just figure it out on our own. It's a sinful nature. Next thing is that the tongue is humanly untamable. Humanly, it's impossible to tame your tongue. You're not able to tame your tongue on your own. We try, but it just all happens too quick. Oh, it just happened too quick. I got this great comeback, and I just blurted it out. Not many people can tame it outright evil. If we're not careful, we'll probably say bad words all the time. You met people like that? I know people like that. They can't even say something good if they try to, you know? It's like they're just, all oh, it's just bad, 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 bad. I'm not even talking about swearing. I mean, I'm just saying, like, everything's bad. It's just all bad things, all talking down to people. Everything's bad, bad, bad. Say bad things all the time. You know what we need? You guys ever do this? Mm. Anybody ever had to do this before? Call for you guys? Mm. It doesn't really work. I mean, it doesn't really clean the bad words out. Maybe it just gives you, like, soap poisoning or something, you know. That's nasty. Um, ugh. I think I got water up here, man. I'm going to, like, start bubbling up. Some of us need to walk around with one of these stuck in our mouth 24 hours a day, though. You know what I'm talking about? We need to just, like, like duct tape that baby on there. It'll clean out our mouth. It'll also prevent us from saying stuff, you know? It's like, I don't know if it helps you to, like, say good things, but it sure keeps you from saying bad things while it's stuck in your mouth. Man, that was horrible. That's the bad news. The tongue is not humanly tameable. The good news is this. It's divinely tameable. With God's help, God can help us to tame our tongue. It's not impossible. It's impossible on our own, but it's not impossible with God's help. The next thing is the tongue is twisted. The tongue is twisted. It's deranged. You know what I mean? It, it just says crazy things. James talks about all like he says, can an apple tree produce watermelons? Can, can, a, can a watermelon bush or plant or whatever it is, produce, vine produce strawberries? Can a peach tree produce pumpkins? No. But he said, out of your same mouth comes blessings and curses. We're saying good things one time, turn around saying something else. It's twisted. One moment my tongue is giving help and love and encouraging people, even up here preaching, and my tongue's doing good things, and then it twists on us. One minute later, we're saying horrible things to people. We're saying all kinds of bad things. It blesses, and then it turns around and curses somebody. It helps people, and it hurts people. 
But man, we can do some great things with our tongue too. We can, we can inspire people. We can encourage people. We can give people the inspiration to move on. You ever start your day happy? And then somebody comes up to you and they're like, well, so-and-so said this about you. You know, and man, it just wrecks it. Well, you know what I think about them, you know? And it, it's, like, it's like now our, well, I'm ready to get twisted now. My tongue's going to start, start throwing some venom out there now. You know what God wants us to do? God wants us all to go to speech therapy class. He wants us to have some speech. I'm not talking about to stop your stuttering or stop, you know, slurring your words or whatever it is. I'm saying some speech therapy so we can start controlling the things that we say. We need to start doing that. Be careful, because our tongue is powerful. Psalms 19, verse 14. It says, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Are the words of our mouth pleasing to God? Do the words that we speak please God? Or are they displeasing to Him? So here's three ways that we can tame our tongue. Three things that we can do to help tame our tongue. The first thing is to pause. To pause. You know, you're watching a movie, you got to go to the bathroom. Pause. I'll be right back, you know. We pause for just a moment. James 1.19, the first, verse in, uh, first chapter in James says, You must all be quick to listen and what? Slow. Slow. And be what? Slow, Slow to speak. Slow to speak. You know slow talkers? Sometimes you're like, come on, get moving. <laughs> I'm not talking about being a slow talker. It says, but be slow to speak. It means pause, hold on, let's think about that. Let's capture that thought for a minute before it escapes out our pie hole. Let's just stop for a second here and think about it. Slow to speak and slow to get angry. Slow down, pause, uh, hold the tongue. We need to hold on to it a little bit. Maybe it's best to not say anything at all. You know, you never get in trouble with your words if you keep your mouth shut. Man, you just keep your mouth shut, and it helps a lot. Man, just try it. Man, the next good, and I know it's hard, but the next time you feel like this, mm, oh, I got a good one to say. Just, Lord, help me keep my big mouth shut. <laughs> Just pause for a moment. Slow down. You know, maybe I shouldn't say this. Maybe I shouldn't post that comment on that person's, you know, Facebook, even though they are so annoying and they're so wrong, and I want to tell them how wrong they are. Pause for a minute. Keep it to myself. Let me pause before I, before I retaliate. Let me pause before I, before I light that spark which lights a fire. You got a, somebody comes up, you got a thought on this? What do you think about what this person did? No, no, I'm good. Zip. Hey, wait, you got an opinion on this? Nah, nah, honey, I'm good. You know, it's like, I'm done. I'm not going there. Like, like let's just pause for a minute. And think through what we're saying. So pause. The next thing is ponder. We say no to the motor mouth madness. We say no, I'm not just going to just say anything that pops into my head. Man, God, help me to think before I speak. Let me ponder it. I love going to the dentist. You guys like going to the dentist? Man, they just give you all kinds of stuff there, you know? You go to the dentist, they give you a new car and a new boat and a new toothbrush and all this new stuff. Here's something that, that we got at the dentist. It's kind of, kind of weird. You know what this is? It's a tongue scraper. <laughs> like, you need to scrape your tongue. I don't know. Just, like, couldn't they come up with something, like, a better name for that? Like, instead of scraper. Scraping and tongue just doesn't go well together. But it's a tongue scraper. You're supposed to, like, put it in your mouth and scrape it, I guess. But some of us, we need a spiritual tongue scraper. You know what I'm saying? Like we need to scrape our tongue of all those, that poison, that, that, that rust, those destructive words that we're about to launch out there. We need to think before we speak. Just this past week, uh, my brother 
is, uh, is in the Marines. He just graduated from school of infantry. He posted a picture. And me, you know, because, like, I'm a pastor and he's a Marine. I'm like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, like, try to come out, like, looking tough and macho, too, you know. So I, I posted something on it, and, and I showed Carolyn when I posted because I thought I was tough and macho. And she just looked at me like, what in the world were you thinking? <laughs> and so I deleted it after. I don't know, I guess I can tell you. I, it, was, it was stupid, it was stupid. I, don't, I feel stupid even saying it. I said, I said, okay, yeah, you go and kill them all, and I'll do the funeral for them. I'm like, <laughs> like, well, I'm a pastor, I can do that, I can do funerals, you know. And we just let these words just fly out, you know, let our thumbs just do the talking. I deleted it, so uh, don't, don't hate, because I'll post about you on Facebook. No, um... <laughs> No, but you know, I mean, we, we do things like that, where we just say things, we're like trying to impress people, or we're trying to cut someone down, or we're trying to appear tough, or we're trying to appear in, like, you know, you're around people, and they're all say, swearing, or they're all doing things, or, or like I go down south, and everybody talks, like, hey, y'all, how are you doing? And it's like, you want to start talking like them, you know, it kind of rubs off. How they talk rubs off on us, and we're around people, and we want to start fitting in, so we start talking like them, and saying all kinds of bad things. We need to think before we speak. Think before we speak. Take your notes. T. The T of think means is it true? Is it true? Are the words that we're saying true? Now, now let, me, let me just hold on one second. You're like, yeah, it's true. I told him what a horrible, rotten person that, you know, that person. No, I'm not saying like, like gossip kind of thing. Like when you're talking to somebody, like is it true? Like is it truth? But also is it, you know, is it helpful? That's what the age is. Is it helpful? You know, you, your words are like an elevator. Are, are your words lifting people up or are they taking them down to the basement floor? Like, where are your words? Your words are, are, are moving people. Are they moving them up or down? Is it helpful? Uh, the, the I is, is it inspiring? Are people inspired when I speak? Or are they leaving just like, you know depressed. We know people like that. We know both, people probably like both like that. Where, where you talk to somebody, you know, man, whenever I talk to this person, I'm going to leave feeling better about myself. Right? That person is just going to inspire me. They're going to say nice things about me. They're going to lift me up. And then there's other people who, man, you just don't want to be around them. Because all they're going to do is just bring you down. You go in, you feeling good about your life. And by the time you're done, you're like wanting to jump off a bridge. And you're like, man, this is horrible. we got to be in control of the words. Is it, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it, is it necessary? Is it necessary for me to say this to someone? Is it really important? Or am I just saying because I'm getting some kind of kick out of it? But the last thing kind of balances it all off is, is it kind? Are our words kind? You know, in God's word, we, we see that um, we're supposed to take thoughts captive. We're supposed to focus on the good, the things that are good and lovely, have a good report. Are the words that we say, are they kind and uplifting or are they hurtful? Because if they're, if they're and I'm not saying it's not going to come, it's going to pop in your head. Don't beat yourself up if the words pop in your head. But see, what we have control over is if we keep our mouth shut, keep our thumbs tucked into gloves or something. You can't really text good with gloves. But you know what I'm saying? Like, like we, we, we keep away, we stop these things. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? And the last way that we tame the tongue is pray. Like I said, man, praying, God, help me keep my big mouth shut. Man, prayers can build people up too. If we're praying for people, man, help me pray Lord, help me to pray before I say things that I shouldn't say. Let me just take that moment and say, God, help me with these things. What do they say? Loose lips sink ships. Right? And there was apparently a, a guy, I don't know how the legend goes, some military guy, and he was in some briefing, and, and they found out that something about the Japanese trying to bomb our subs like underwater. And he came out and did a press conference and said, We don't have to worry. The Japanese can't bomb our subs, they're not going deep enough. They're not bombing them deep enough. And then so what, you know, then now it goes out in the news, and then now Japanese is like, oh, 
So that's the problem, you know? We need to go deeper. And they say like six subs were destroyed as a result of that. I don't know if it's true or not. It might be just legend, probably just legend. But they say loose lips sink ships. But here's the, here's the balance. With praying lips, praying lips save lives. Praying lips build people up. Praying lips offer encouragement to people. The tongue is a spiritual issue. But here's the thing that's interesting is, you know, the tongue, not, not physically, but spiritually, it's tied to our heart. It's just tied to our heart. Matthew 12, verse 34, listen to what Jesus says. He's talking to the Pharisees. He says, you brood of snakes. How could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. Here's the thing. The tongue isn't really even the issue so much. It's where did that even come from? It's coming from our heart. It's, see, what's down in the well is always going to come up in the bucket. Whatever you pull up from down there, that's going to come up. He says, can, can you get fresh water from a salty spring? No. Gossip. Gossip doesn't necessarily reveal a gossiping tongue. It reveals a gossiping heart. Jealousy. Jealousy, I mean, we're jealous. That doesn't always reveal just a jealous tongue, but a jealous heart. We need to think about things that have a good report. The words that we speak are the product of our heart. And what we need is, is transformation. We need to be transformed in the way that we speak and the way that we talk to people. Make sure that our words are building up people, that we're speaking life and truth and goodness and not speaking destruction. Let's bow our heads. Father, we come to you now, and Lord, I, I know we all have a difficulty with our tongue sometimes, saying things. I, I know I do personally. And Lord, we just ask you to forgive us of the words that we speak that are not spoken in love and kindness, that are spoken out of anger, that are spoken out of sarcasm, that are spoken out of a critical spirit, Lord. Help us speak words that are true and uplifting and kind and inspiring to those around us. We know that we can't do it on our own, but your word says that if any man is in Christ, if any woman is in Christ, if any child is in Christ, he is a new creation, he's a new person. Old things are gone. And, and if, if you're here and, and, man, you've been having a difficulty controlling the words of your mouth, it's time that we give that to God and say, I, I just got to I gotta pause. I got to ponder. I got to pray before I say these things that are hurtful. Yeah, it feels good when we let it slip, but you know what? It's like lighting a forest fire. Lord, help us to control our tongue. If you're here and, and, and you've not put your faith in Jesus Christ, it's going to be extremely difficult to try to control your tongue. It's hard enough as it is. But I would encourage you to, to consider putting your faith in Jesus. He's the one that says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we have to face the facts that he's either the king of kings who he says he is or he's just a liar or a crazy person. And Lord, we just trust that Jesus is the Lord. Please open up our hearts to him. We give you our lives. We give you our heart. And we give you our tongue. Let us speak things that are an encouragement. In Jesus' name. Why don't you stand with us?